Essentially, a perpetual swap is just a futures contract that never expires. It, it is perpetual, but every eight hours, uh, you'll you'll see the the funding reset. And so, funding is essentially its mechanism, which to that keeps the this uh, perpetual swap contract tethered to a spot index, tethered to the price of Bitcoin. And so, the higher that the, a perpetual swap goes from the spot index, what you'll see is that funding goes higher and higher. So, at the top here, he says, you know. Uh, five basis points uh, and 60% APR. What that means is that on a notional basis, um, you know, on for over an eight hour period, bulls were paying bears 0.05% of their notional position size to stay long. Um, so this just means that that this uh, move, uh, the all time high break right around the 21st, it was driven uh, heavily by derivatives. And so, you know, over short time frames, uh, funding can spike and reset and doesn't matter, but over long term time frames, if funding is high for an extended period of time, it kind of tells you that the market is is, is supported by leverage, is supported by uh, derivative traders, and it's and it's something it's pretty healthy to see these uh, traders wiped out. Um, so when you see funding spike like this, what it means is uh, you know bulls are getting a little too excited, and that you know drawdowns in that sense volatility it's it's healthy for this market. It's kind of a natural correction mechanism. But the perpetual swaps market is is one of the most you know traded and liquid. Uh, instruments in in all of Bitcoin, and uh, you know it's it's something to follow for for traders looking to to gain an edge. Yeah, and yeah, I mean even over this last month, we've seen some smaller, healthy kind of liquidations there, where you see you know the funding rate not at these levels, but lower levels, kind of grinding upwards, and, and while price is going down, and that divergence you know cleared out at least uh, um, on over the last two weeks, four or five you know relatively bigger days over the last month of, of liquidations that we saw price. Yeah, so here's just that same chart, uh, but just you know, year to date, and so you can see the difference between today and April. Um, you see this, you know, these massive funding spikes, um, and then you know, every time you see these kind of mini corrections in the February to March, April timeframe, you see that that the price drawdown, and you, it's essentially right. The dip was being bought with leverage, and then you see that huge red candle right uh, in the middle of May, May 19th, when Bitcoin just got obliterated, and that was just all of that leverage unwinding, and so. Uh, you know, these red candles during that period, during that time in the market, uh, if you were long in the perpetual swaps market, you were getting paid by bears to be long. Um, so you kind of see the ebbs and flows of, of sentiment uh, and just the cyc cyclicity of derivative markets and, and just kind of what traders are thinking. Uh, and this is just kind of overlaid with spot dynamics, right? Derivatives can't drive a market uh, for extended periods of time. It's only just kind of uh, overlaid bets on top of it. So they can whipsaw price back and forth but long term, what what really matters is spot demand. I mean, you know, stackers of last resort swapping fiat or or energy or anything for Bitcoin and not selling, uh, and derivatives just kind of add an extra layer of, of volatility. So, you know, these charts can can be helpful to add context to why the seemingly random price action of Bitcoin isn't so random, and it's actually just in balance, uh, you know, naturally correcting. Yeah, that's a great point. And then if we pair this up, thinking about where the previous price all time high was. That was mostly derivatives dri driven. If we look back at the long-term holder supply charts, where we see a lot of sell-off from long-term holders at the same time, so really selling off a, a lot of that spot, um, and then derivatives kind of, you know, holding up the market during during that all-time high. So you know, really, it is you know, price set more long-term is is set by what that long-term holder activity is doing. Yeah, the the really explosive moves you see are when whether it's you know bullish or bearish is when the derivatives market is very, is very long and spot markets, you know, whether you want to look at long-term holder supply drawing down or a liquid supply, or, you know, a lot of the stuff we can quantify on chain in real time, coin days destroyed, um, all of these things that kind of show old hands moving their coins, you know, most likely selling uh, with derivative markets long, like we saw in the end of April and May or on the flip side, right? When we see, you know, an aggressive move upwards in July as the derivative market is increasingly bearish, uh, you saw, you know, I think it was like billions of dollars of liquidations from the, the Binance perpetual swap market, where all these traders were shorting Bitcoin with Tether, where they were shorting Bitcoin with stable coins at the same time as a massive spot accumulation was occurring. So, you know, these are the things that we cover in the deep dive, um, these dichotomies that, you know, give really interesting kind of price action and, and market moves and volatility. Um, they don't happen too often, but when they do, uh, you know, 
you can you can find out why with a deep dive and, and by looking at these things, uh, oh, you know, derivative market and on-chain accumulation overlaid. Yeah, well said. And just to sign off here, uh, if you're not already a free or paid subscriber to the deep dive, uh, you can sign up for free. It'll be in the YouTube link below in the information. Uh, you can also find the deep dive links at Dylan or I's Twitter pages. So um, hope you guys enjoyed this and, uh, and, and come check out some more. Thanks for tuning in. Yep. 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 Yep.